The constant activity at Starbase makes people like us feel as if our own lives are just moving in slow motion. Recently, SpaceX secured a beneficial license for the Starship launch. And on top of that, they completed the stacking of the second launch tower in record time. All is going to get revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main content, we want to tell you, thank you so much for watching these videos. The voiceover artists, the editors, the script writers, we all appreciate. We would not be here without your support. Having said that, we are very close to hitting the 100,000 subscription mark. So if you happen to be watching this video and you enjoy our daily content, please press that subscribe button. It keeps us motivated to keep making this content for you to enjoy and also help support the space community. All right, let's continue. As we move past mid-August, the aerospace community's attention is increasingly focused on early September, the time when Elon previously announced the fifth test flight of the Starship spacecraft. This launch is crucial for the ongoing development of the entire Starship program, marking the first time SpaceX will attempt to catch the returning rocket using Mechazilla, attempting to push the boundaries of rocket technology even further. In a groundbreaking move, SpaceX just received a license from the FCC for the Starship program. The license is valid from now through February 25th of next year. Under the purpose of operations section, the agency states launch vehicle communications for the test flight mission launching from Starbase, Texas. The first stage booster will either return to the launch site or perform a controlled water landing. This FCC approval marks a major milestone, essentially giving a preliminary nod to SpaceX's revolutionary booster recovery method. However, the path forward is not entirely clear yet. Now it's the Federal Aviation Administration that still needs to weigh in, and their decision is highly anticipated. Interestingly, despite the absence of a formal mishap investigation from the previous flight, FAA seems to be taking its good old time. This delay could be attributed to the complex nature of SpaceX's new mission profile for their upcoming launch. The concept of catching a large rocket booster with mechanical arms is unprecedented in the history of space travel. If successful, this feat would not only give SpaceX an edge over the competition, but also have the potential to revolutionize the entire approach to rocket reusability. While awaiting that next test flight, SpaceX has been working on the main component of the Super Heavy Catch Tower, also known as the Chopsticks. Booster 14.1 returned to the launch pad August 8th after what I believe was a period spent reviewing the impacts of the previous test back in June. Although it had been on the OLM for a while, it wasn't until August 16th that we saw the first bold test of the Chopsticks with its test tank. SpaceX is preparing for a revolutionary step for their fifth Starship flight ensuring they don't risk a 200-ton booster crashing into the launch pad. This time, the testing process has been upgraded. The Mechazilla arms, aka chopsticks, no longer just move in the air. They now close tightly around the booster with extended landing rails, creating an impressive spectacle. But the most intriguing feature is the new shock absorption mechanism. Imagine giant cushions designed especially for a rocket. The small rail cushions on the arm can extend, acting as impact absorbers when the booster lands. It's a pretty clever solution to counter the massive inertia of a rocket booster plummeting at incredible speeds. Not stopping there, SpaceX continues to test various scenarios. With the chopstick arms fully extended, we witness these dramatic slaps from a powerful single arm slap to a forceful double arm slap causing the booster to shake but stay secure. And the good news is that these vibrations are less violent than in previous tests, indicating that the new design has gotten an upgrade. After a series of tests, the booster was moved to the rocket garden without any visible damage. The coming days are going to be huge for assessing the detailed results of these tests. Whether any changes will be made remains to be seen, but they are unlikely to beat that much. Booster 14.1's laying the groundwork for a historic milestone, the successful catch of Booster 12 during the upcoming fifth Starship flight. And this also serves as a valuable lesson for SpaceX, which they can apply to future Mechazilla towers, especially the second launch tower at Starbase that recently finished its structure. After completing repairs on their special crane, SpaceX quickly finished stacking Module 7 August 16th. And less than two days later, Module 8 got stacked, and by August 22nd, Module 9 was perched atop the tower. This rapid progress showcases just how quickly SpaceX is moving with all this work. Upon closer inspection, one notices a unique aspect of the tower structure. While modules 1 through 6 each have three floors, modules 7 and 8, they only got two. 
The design differs from Tower 1 in the launch tower at LC-39A, where there are seven evenly spaced three four-hour modules and a top module with only one floor. However, don't let this difference fool you. A quick calculation shows that the total height of the tower is unchanged. Only the floor layout at the top has been adjusted. This novel arrangement might stem from some smart technical considerations. The reason behind this change could relate to the construction process. As the tower gets taller, lifting the heavy modules to the top gets more challenging. By reducing the size of the two top modules, SpaceX has given a clever solution, lowering the weight of the sections that need to be lifted to the highest point while still maintaining the necessary overall tower weight. Moreover, we also see improvements in the tower stacking time. It's unbelievable that in just 41 days, less than a month and a half, SpaceX completed the stacking of the second launch integration tower at Starbase. Compared to previous tower builds, this is a big advancement, but this isn't just a speed record. The modules were also constructed potentially six to nine months faster than those for OLIT-1 when it got stacked. Elon celebrated this achievement by sharing stunning images of the second launch tower with the caption, The Two Towers. However, it also has another meaning that we can understand more deeply. Two Towers, well, that's the second part of the famous trilogy, Lord of the Rings, followed by the third part, Return of the King. Elon's message subtly hints that the massive starship rocket is akin to a king, suggesting that we are soon going to see the spectacular return of fully reusable rockets. Yes, please. From here, we can see that nothing is impossible for SpaceX. And if I remember correctly, there were times when public opinion did not trust Elon's way of building the tower. But now, take a look at this. SpaceX building the foundation and stacking the tower in nearly 90 days. Too fast and amazing. During this period, there's also doubt about SpaceX's plan to catch rockets using the tower. In the nearly three years since Elon first tweeted about the effort to catch the super heavy booster with the tower's arms, it's hard to imagine how exactly it could be done. But just for that reason, it was worth SpaceX going through all this trouble to build this amazing machine. They devised a method to land the Falcon 9 rocket vertically on its legs, a feat no other aerospace company has done, even after its initial success. Back in 2015, the first stage of Falcon 9 made history by landing perfectly on solid ground at Cape Canaveral, a milestone never been done before. Just a few months later, April in 2016, the first stage of Falcon 9 hit another groundbreaking moment by successfully landing on a drone ship positioned in the ocean for the first time. Why does SpaceX even want to do these things even though they're already at the top? Elon clarified it on December 30, 2020, responding on X as he often does when asked if Super Heavy would land like a Falcon 9. Elon replied, we're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with a launch tower arm, using the grid fence to take the load. Well, people speculated the booster would be too tall and heavy for legs. Elon explained, legs certainly work, but the best part is no part. The best step is no step. In essence, he's saying they could take the easy route, but he's intentionally choosing the more challenging path, and there's good reason for this. Elon added, saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of the booster onto the launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. If the Super Heavy were to land on the pad like the initial Starship tests, Bringing it back to the launch mount, even if nearby, would be a big undertaking. It would require a mobile crane and the large tank tread transport vehicle used at Starbase for rocket movement. The process involves the crane lifting the booster, placing it on the transport, moving the entire setup to the launch mount, using the crane once more to return the booster to the mount, and then driving both machines back to the hangar. Landing legs are not only heavy, expensive, and complex, but they can also be fragile and require a lot of maintenance. For instance, Falcon 9 comes down with a lot of force, and although SpaceX uses a crumple zone called crushed cores in the legs to absorb the energy, they still need replacement after each landing. While this isn't a big problem for Falcon given the refurbishment needed for kerosene-burning engines, for Starship and Super Heavy designed for rapid reusability and clean-burning methane engines, can't afford the time for inspections and leg refurbs, especially at Elon's envisioned launch cadence of three launches a day per booster. So that's why Elon built the launch tower. It was just his way of taking rocket engineering to the next level and also making Starship construction even cheaper, even renewable, used more and more effectively. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.